Meet our mom, Kelly Hutchison. She is a life coach. She is a child counselor. She is a teacher. She's a parent coach. And she's a mom to us. She will teach you to stop yelling at your kids. She will teach you to get your kids to lesson. She will teach you how to never sleep with mommy guilt again. She will teach you how to be an imperfect mom. So you can help your kids be imperfect too. And, and have, have harmony in the home. Hey everyone, welcome to episode seven, how to have happy, kind, and confident kids. I mean, first of all, before I start, I just have to say y'all with the love bombs sending my way is next level. Like what is going on? This was one of the scariest things I've ever done. And I don't know why I'm talking like a valley girl, but I can't stop when I think about all of the love and the reviews and the shares and the emails and the voxes and the texts and the signs and the, I mean, I'm like, this is unbelievable because putting yourself out there, I don't know if you've ever done it, like raising your hand at a meeting is scary. This is like standing up on the boardroom table during a meeting and doing um, the moonwalk. That's what it feels like. But you guys have all received me with so much love and like, caught me in the most vulnerable state possible of putting myself out there. And this topic is not an easy topic. I still don't know why I'm talking about like a Valley Girl and I can't stop because I feel like I wish that I was like making a podcast about like something simple, like couponing, which I love, or like scrapbooking, which I also love, or photography, which I want to know how to love. I mean, I love it, but I don't know how to do it. So I just want to thank you so much for all of it because it ain't easy, yo, to talk about parenting to other parents. And I have kids because I never want to put any type of spotlight on my kids or on me. And this is the way to do it. I want to unleash the power within you to show you what an expert you are on your own children. You have been given the exact child that is meant to teach you where you need to grow. So there are no accidents. So I don't want you to go through motherhood and think of it as martyrhood of the victim and these kids and because kids pick up on energy big time. Your sensitive ones or your strong-willed kids, they pick up on all the things. They are like energy receptors. They're like puppies times 10. So I want you to think about if you if you were ever pregnant, that what you what you ate and what you put into your body, you knew was being absorbed into the baby that was in your belly. The same idea happens with your children. They know if they are annoying or they know if mom and dad like them. They know if their parents want them around because of when they say mom and you're like, what? They pick up on all of that. Tone is everything with kids. So I want you to remember that the what you fed, what you were eating, what you were thinking, what you, how you were sleeping, how you were taking care of yourself during pregnancy is the same thing with the energy in which you're bringing to this relationship. So I don't want, I don't want you to go through these 18 years of feeling like a victim, feeling like it's you against the kids. I want it you with the kids. And so I wrote a, I always ask on Facebook, what are the traits that you want for your children? I ask it all the time. And so my lovely father takes all of those results and all of those answers and he puts them in an Excel spreadsheet. And the most popular top three traits are happy, confident, and kind. And I'm here to tell you that it is possible to have happy, confident, and kind children. And the way you do that is to make sure that you're happy, confident, and kind. And when you're not, show your kids that as well. So they know that they don't have to be happy, confident, and kind all the time. That we put so much pressure on the kids to be happy or confident and kind. And it's really about us because we need them to feel happy, confident, and kind so we can feel happy, confident, and kind about our parents. But it's not fair to use our kids as a pawn to make us feel a certain way because they're just worried about like, 
when they're getting their next Lego set and who they're going to sit with at lunch. They can't be worried about filling up our cup, our love cup. And they can't be worried about filling up our insecurities and where we're not confident and when we're not happy. So I want to tell you a little story about, it was like a lightning bolt moment in my life. It was about my second year of teaching. And I was in way over my head with all these first graders. There were so many of them. And there was only one of me. I was like 21 years old, maybe 22, fresh out of college. And it was hard. I was staying at the school till seven, eight o'clock every night. I spent thousands of dollars on my classroom. If you ever saw my classroom, it looked like a, it looked like a circus. I mean, we had no bulletin boards. And so wall, floor to ceiling was all the rainbow. I mean, it was like circus Cirque du Soleil. It was floor to ceiling fabric, red panels, two red panels, then two orange panels, then two yellow panels. It was like Disneyland in there. And so I had all the things from the outside looking in of what I thought was a great teacher. And except I went home every, and this is before I had my own kids. I went home every day exhausted. I'm talking like next level exhausted. I'm talking like flub my lips, stare at a wall, exhausted. And I remember I was just constantly reminding the kids of the rules. I felt like a broken record and no one was listening to me. Kind of like probably how you feel at home because I get that email every day. I'm exhausted. No one's listening to me. I can't stop yelling. And I was always in this in this state. Stop. Sit down. Stop talking. Raise your hand. Get to work. And it was like rinse, repeat. Like just put that on a loop. Stop. Raise your hand. Quit talking stand in line, leave him alone, on and on and on. And I was kind of a huffy Hutchison, although I was stout at the time. And I remember little Mark Lycan, and he's probably, I don't know, 30 years old these days. And I remember him, he said this underneath his breath, and it changed the trajectory of my entire life. And he had no idea because I didn't even acknowledge that he said it. He said under his breath, she seems like she's always mad at us. And I wasn't even talking to him when he said it. I was like, oh my goodness, is that how they're seeing me? It like woke me up. And so from that day forward, I was like, that is not okay. That he thinks that I think that I'm always mad at them because I love these students. They were like, they were treasures to me. I didn't have kids of my own. So they were like my own 20 kids. So I went home that night and I said, things are going to change. So the next day I went to school and I focused on everything that they were doing right So if I wanted someone to sit on their bottom, I would look next to the person and say, thank you, Hannah, for sitting on your bottom. If I wanted them to get to work and stop talking, I would look at Diana Zulian, who was not talking and doing her work. And I'd say, thank you, Diana, for being so on task. Look at how responsible you're being. Then if I saw two kids being restless in the line, but I would see someone with their hands behind their back ready to get to line, I'd say, look at you, Amanda. (gasps) Everyone take a minute and look at Amanda as her face like lights up. Amanda, thank you for standing there. Are you a statue? I think you might be a statue. And so what did happen? All of a sudden, this negative Nelly teacher turns into positive Patty. And all of a sudden, I had a different classroom overnight because kids want your attention. And so if you want happy, confident, and kind kids, Catch them doing happy, confident, and kind things and reinforce that versus what the brain is going to default to, which we talked about in the previous episode, 80% of your thoughts will default to the negative because the brain wants to seek pleasure, avoid pain, and be efficient. It doesn't like joy. So instead of focusing on what your kids are not doing and nagging and complaining, you're only going to reinforce it if with the nagging and complaining. So instead, focus on what they are doing right. Catch them doing it. And over and over and over, you'll see that not only will they start doing what you want them to, you will start finding it. Because wherever your focus goes, your energy flows. That's Tony Robbins for you. It's true with everything in life. If I focus on all the amazing things about David, then more amazing qualities come out with him. And I'm just like seeking. I tell my brain, my brain is like a metal detector at the beach. So I'm always telling the brain to focus on what my kids are doing right, reinforce it. And then the kids start becoming a self-fulfilling prophecy and focusing on what they're doing right too. And then they're going to start having their inner voice saying, wow, I'm pretty happy. I'm a kind kid. I'm pretty confident. 
Because over and over and over, I'm catching Lily in her confident moments where she talks to someone at Supercuts, let's say. And that's really hard for her to say, thanks for the haircut. And, she, and I was like, wow, you did that with such confidence. You are so confident. That was amazing. I don't know if I could have done that at 11. And I'll catch Grady when he's kind, when he leaves a pillow out for Maggie. I'm like, look at your beautiful heart, how kind you are and so thoughtful of Maggie, leaving out a pillow that smells like Lily because she's out of town right now. That is amazing. I don't know if I was that kind when I was eight years old. Where did you learn to do that? And he just kind of shrugs his shoulders. So guess what I'm going to get more of? More kindness and confidence. And when they're happy, that's awesome. And when they're not, that's okay too, because they don't have to be happy all the time. I remember having a meeting with a, a, lots of parents. And I remember this, I had conferences all the time. And I remember having one with Hannah. And Hannah's mom came in and Hannah was such a delight in class. She was a good listener. She tried her best. She was always helping the other students. And so when Hannah's mom came in, I was telling her all these wonderful qualities about her child. I said, Hannah is all the things I just said. She's responsible. She works hard. She tries her best. Sometimes the math is really hard, but she doesn't give up. She raises her hand because she knows it's harder for her. So she pays attention. She asks to sit at the front of the class sometimes. And she's like, I think you're talking about someone else because she is never like that at home. She is this. She is that. She's a brat. She doesn't listen. She's And I was like, whoa, whoa, whoa. Did you just call Hannah a brat? And she's like, oh, you should see her at home. She is a nightmare. She doesn't share with her brother. She, and I was like, well, at school, this is how what I'm seeing. She's like, well, at home, this is what I'm seeing. And I wanted to say what you focus on is only what you're going to find more of. So if you're always focusing on the negative behavior and reinforcing that, you're going to see more of it and you're going to teach your brain to look for it more. So we have to retrain the brain to look for the goodness in our kids to have more of that in them. And we have to see that from ourselves first and within ourselves. When we're beating ourselves up and we're super hard on ourselves, we're going to be beating up our kids and super hard on them, not physically beating them up, but complaining and nagging and, and hurrying and not really enjoying their essence and their beauty. And I remember almost having like a, a debate with her about, no, she's a really good kid. And she was telling me, no, she's not a really good kid. These are the things that are wrong with her. And I was like, well, these are the things that are right with her. It was like this tug of war. It was crazy. And so a lot of times the way that we feel about ourselves, we project onto our kids. And I remember I was signing, I'm not signing. I was selling agendas at the beginning of the school year. This was another incident where I was selling agendas and a parent came up and said, I'm going to take two planners. And I had this child previously. Now she was in fifth grade and I had her a couple of years before a delightful little girl. And I said, how many planners do you need? And she says, I'm going to take two. And I kind of looked at her sideways like you only have one child. And I figured she's buying for a friend. I said, "Okay, I just need to know the name of the teacher and the grade. And she said, "Um, Sierra Smith, grade five. And I said, "Okay, that's the first one. Who's the second one? She said, Sierra Smith, grade five. And I said, oh, you only need one for the whole school year because it goes, it doesn't just go until December. It goes all the way until May or June. And she said, oh, no, 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 I need two. And I looked at her kind of funny. And she says, because Sierra loses everything. And Sierra's sitting right there. And I said, Sierra does not lose anything. She's Miss Responsible Rita. And she says, oh, yeah, I've been down this road before. I know she she, she's going to lose it. And Sierra's sitting there and you can just see her getting smaller as her mom is pretty much ripping on her in front of her about how irresponsible and disorganized she is. And I said, I think she just needs one. And Sierra's saying, Mom, I'm not going to lose it. You don't need to buy two. They're like 15 bucks a pop. You don't need to buy two. You don't need to buy two. She's like, oh, I know better. I know better. And And Sierra's mom opens up her wallet to pay for it. And stuff is flying out of all over her wallet all over her purse. She can't find her money. She can't find her checkbook. Things are flying everywhere. So what do you think was happening there? Sierra's mom was projecting her disorganized energy onto her child and then only reinforcing it. And I'm like, no, don't do that. Because whatever you're going to focus on is only going to keep growing. So I want you to think about how you think about your kids. And don't believe everything that you think. I get emails after emails after emails from parents telling me how challenging their children are and all these diagnoses and all these labels. And I want to say, and question mark, what's your point? Tell me that if you tell me all the diagnosis and you tell me they're on medicine, all medicine does is it puts drag, it puts the dragon in the basement. It's just a band-aid for the problem. But if you're always thinking about the child with those diagnoses and with those 
behaviors and always thinking of those labels, then you're only going to see more of it because the brain is like a lawyer in a courtroom, finding evidence for whatever you ask it to find evidence for. So if you ask me to find ADD in every child, I will find it. I will find it in myself. If you help me, if you tell me to look for all the amazing qualities in the children, I'll be able to find that too. So wherever you're focusing, that's what you're going to find more of. So be careful of the labels that you're putting on yourself and that you're putting on your kids because you're only going to reinforce that and get more of that. I remember when I was, Grady was in first grade and I was getting notes home from the teacher and I was like, whoa, what is going on? And the late, the notes were saying things like, he's not being organized. He's His pencil pouch is all over the map. He's finishing before he is should be finished. He's rushing through his work. And I was super triggered as a teacher, as a parent coach, and as a mom. I was like, O-M-G. And I could feel my ego just roaring like, okay, take a deep breath, take a deep breath. And I remember thinking, okay, what would I do if a parent came to me and said this? What would I tell them? What would be my advice? What would would be their action plan? This is at the beginning of the school year. And so I remember I had to detach the ego. This is not define Grady. I don't want you to think these labels define your child. Your child is so much bigger than the ADD or the labels or the whatever kind of labels you want to put on them. They are so much greater than that. So I remember thinking, okay, so whatever he's having a problem with, I'm going to find the opposite and reinforce that. So we had responsible, time management, and organization. Okay. So every day for 180 days, I would catch him being responsible. I would actually set him up for being responsible, then reinforce that. So then his inner voice is telling himself that he's responsible. For example, he'd be getting out for school. And remember, Grady is like a space cadet like me. He's very spacey, very all over the map, but in the cutest, most adorable way. He would come up for, out for school, like in flip-flops and his collared shirt on backwards and be like, hey, I'm ready for school. And I'm like, uh, what are you doing? I'm like, Grady, your shirt's on backwards. That's okay. You can't wear flip-flops to school. That's okay. Today, I think I can. So he comes out for school and I'll just use the lunchbox as, as, as an example. He would go to school without his lunchbox, but instead of me saying, remember your lunchbox, be responsible. Can't believe you forgot again. That's what my brain wanted to do, but I had to rewire the brain, retrain the brain. And so I put his lunchbox like right in front of the door where he has to trip out over it before he walks out the door. So he, the lunchbox is sitting on the floor in front of the door. Lily knows what's up. So she's seeing that. She's like, oh dear. And so he goes and he picks up his lunchbox and keeps walking. And I was like, oh, wow, Grady, you are so responsible. Look at you remembering your lunchbox. Way to go, responsible Ralph. And I'm giving him a high five. He's physical touch. We'll talk about love language in another, in another episode. And he's physical touch. So I'm giving him high fives, patting him on the back, doing a little happy dance. Small little things compound over time. Look at how responsible you are. Wow, that's amazing. Are you in first grade or second grade? The next day, put it not in front of the door, but I put it kind of the side of the door. And then he picks it up. He's like, mommy, look how responsible I am. I'm like, yes. So now the inner voice, it's coming from in to out. I don't want it always coming from out to in. I don't want him to do things because he wants to make mommy and daddy proud. I want him to do things because it makes himself feel good. That self-fulfilling prophecy, I want that inner voice to be strong now. And so it's only going to grow in time. And I'm like, wow, you're so responsible. Then the next day on the dining room table, which is kind of by the door, then the next day on the, in the kitchen, on the counter, he's grabbing it. And I am reinforcing it for 180 days. Then I'm leaving it in the refrigerator. Then I'm seeing him remind Lily to get her lunchbox. And then Lily's helping me to reinforce, reinforce him. And I'm like, Lily, just forget your lunchbox today and then have Grady remind you. And then she would play the part. She's older sister. And she's like, thank you, Grady. That's You're so responsible. So for 180 days, he heard how responsible he was. So guess what he started to think? He was super responsible. And then I wasn't even, the lunchbox wasn't even a situation. Same thing with time management. After school, I'd say, what time do you want to do your homework? Do you want to do your homework at 2.45 or 3.02? Random fun numbers, giving him the reins to his life. 3.02, mommy, so I can do Legos. And I'd say, I hope You remember, because if you forget, then I get to choose what subject we do first. I always like to do reading first. He always wanted to do math. So if he remembered at 3.02 to come out, he got to choose the time. You could say 2.45 or 2.48. He would choose the time. He'd come out and I'd say, oh my goodness, I was hoping you'd forget because I really want to do reading first. A little reverse psychology, which he calls reverse biology. 
so funny. He's like, mommy, I know you're doing reverse biology on me. And so he'd come out at 302 and then he'd say, ah, we get to do math. I'm like, oh, rats, why are you so good at time management? How did you get so good at time management? Are you learning time management at school? Reinforce, 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 reinforce. Reinforce what I want to see versus what I don't want to see. Then the next day, you want to do homework at 302 or 245. I want to do it at 302. I'm like, are you going to set Alexa or you want me to set Alexa? I'm going to set Alexa. So he comes out at 302 and I'm like, oh man, you did it again. How are you so good at time management? And then later he'll be doing his homework and I'll say, I'm going to give you, how long do you think you need to do that? 10 minutes or 20 minutes? He's like, I think about 15. I'm like, you're really good at time management knowing how long this is going to take you. I'm going to give you about 15 minutes and I'll come back to check on you. And I'm constantly reinforcing the time management. And then when I come back at 15 minutes and he's finished or not finished, like, wow, you're really good at time management. Or, oh, I'm not finished yet, but that's okay. You were pretty close. So always focusing on the what he's doing right versus what he's doing wrong. And then the organization was another thing because his room looked like a bomb went off. And we were always helping him and teaching him how to clean. But if you want a child who's organized, then you have to make sure that the rest of the house is organized and you're, you're modeling it for them. So I'd go in his room and it would be pretty messy, but I would find a little corner where all of his Legos were organized. I'd say, whoa, look how organized you are. How did you figure this out that you could put all these Legos in this little corner? Well, I just used the drawers and then I color coded. I'm like, you color coded things? What in the world is going on with you? You're really growing up. So every day I reinforce the time management. I reinforce the responsibility. I reinforce the organization. At the end of the year, his teacher wrote in his little old places you go, Dr. Seuss yearbook that I have for them. I can explain that in another podcast. And she says, wow, Grady, look how far you've come this year. You started off the year with your pencil pouch all over the map. And now at the end of the year with reminding me how to get organized and how to have time and when to start the time test. And he got student of the month two times that year. And I don't care about student of the month. I'm not trying to brag about Grady. I'm trying to brag about the process of how well this works. It was like such a great high five moment of how well this works when you focus on the positive, because whatever you are going to seek, you will find over and over and over. If you're focusing on your child, not listening, being a brat and yelling, then you're going to get more of that being a brat, yelling and not listening. If you're focusing on how amazing they are and their beautiful throbbing spirits, you're going to get more of that and that they're a child of God, that they don't even, none of this defines them because the labels are just going to kill their confidence. When you're constantly telling them what they're doing wrong, they're going to say, wow, I can't get it together. Imagine you have a boss who is always riding your tail. You're going to think, wow, I'm not really good at this job. So the kids look to us to see, how am I doing at this life thing? They don't have any sense of self-worth yet, so they're going to borrow it from us. So we have to have an abundance of self-worth for them to borrow from us and then have their inner voice be strong. So it's not coming from mom and dad. They're not doing it for us. They're doing it because it feels good to be responsible, to be kind, to be confident, to be happy. And when they're not, that's okay too. Just like if we're getting ready to go to the mall and David's yelling at me and he's saying, get in the car, which you would never do, or he's nagging or complaining or telling me I don't listen, I'm probably going to go probably slower and tell him to pound sand in my head. And then that's what your kids are doing. When you're focusing on when they're not doing, they're going to do more of it. When you're focusing on what they're doing, they're going to do more of that. And I remember when I was teaching first grade, there was these cards that came up from kindergarten. And when I first started teaching, I would get these cards and it would tell the child's um, name, all their any allergies they had, any type of um, special needs that they had, which I believe all children have are special needs. I'm 44 and I have special needs. We all have special needs. And so they would, these cards would be filled and then they would talk about their behavior on there. And they would always kind of spread out behavior issues because they you can't ever have too many behaviors just in one classroom. So they would have these cards telling us all about the child in one card, all these labels. So I would read these cards and I would get terrified before the first day of school even started. Like, oh my goodness, David, look at this class. Look at this child. Look at this child. Oh my goodness. And he yells and he screams and he does this and he, he has a terrible temper. Oh my goodness. So then I remember meeting that child and I'm meeting that child through that lens and I'm almost watching him side eyes. Like, when's he going to throw that chair? When's he going to do this? When's he going to do that? And I was so almost scared of the child. I hadn't even met him. And then I started thinking, you know what? This isn't really fair to the kids. They're starting off on the wrong foot and they haven't even met me yet. So I, put, I would get the cards 
and I would put them in my desk and I wouldn't even look at them. I'd have kindergarten teachers say, come look at my list and say, oh, let me tell. I'm like, nope, I don't want to know a thing. I want blank slate, clean slate with all children because all children are from God and they deserve a fair shot at all of this. And so I wouldn't even look at the cards. So everyone started on the same page and I would spend months of just focusing on what they're doing right, focusing on what they're doing right, focus on what they're doing right. And I would have more of that. And the class was so much more enjoyable and I was liking them and loving them. And then they knew that their teacher liked and loved them. So then they liked and loved themselves. We filled up our hearts every day with the love cup. We were always complimenting each other. And it was such a positive environment. And then I, probably around December, I'd pull out the cards and read about them. And I'm like, what? I don't see that at all in that child. That child doesn't have ADD. That child isn't explosive temper. Maybe he gets mad every once in a while, but explosive come on, because I wasn't focusing on any of that. I was focusing on what they were doing right, reinforcing that, and then I was getting more of that. So I just want to encourage you to think about how you're thinking about your kids and don't believe everything that you think, because your thoughts about your child will lead to your feelings, which leads to your actions, which leads to your results. Because the way that you think about your child is the way that they're going to think about themselves. The way that you talk to your child is the way that they're going to talk to themselves. They don't have a clue what to think about themselves, so they're using us to help them, and they believe all of it. Even if we're projecting our stuff onto them, they have no idea. They believe it all. Just like I could tell Lily right now, there's a unicorn in Paris. One day we're going to fly there on an airplane and go see that unicorn in Paris. She would believe me and she's going into middle school. Grady would be like, when's the plane ride? Let's go. You can tell them anything and they believe it because they have no sense of perspective to believe anything else and they trust us with their lives. And so let's have them believe everything that we want to believe about themselves, but we have to believe it about ourselves first. So if you want happy, confident, and kind children, then make sure that you're modeling and embodying it every single day in yourself and then catching them doing the same. So thanks for listening, guys. I love you. And thank you so much for leaving the reviews and the stars and all the love. It makes me feel so happy. So please leave a review. I would love to get to a thousand. That is my on my vision board to get to a thousand reviews. And I will start reading them aloud because they really reinforce this vulnerability hangover that I have every single day about all of this. And your reviews and your likes and your shares and your comments mean the world to me. So thanks for listening. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Hey, mamas, thanks for listening. If you had any ahas, clicks, or those lightning bolt moments while listening, you have to check out my free parenting bootcamp where we take all of this to the next level and we try to create even more awakenings for ourselves so that we can connect more with our kids and never yell at them again. You can sign up at www.coachingkelly.com. And if you really want to fill up my love cup, send me an email of what your aha was, what your click was. What was that lightning bolt resonating moment while you were listening? I want nothing more in life than for you to have harmony in your home and to learn how to be an imperfect mom like me, which allows your kids to be imperfect too, each and every day. Thanks for listening.